एवरीवन इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द इम्पेरिकल फेलियर क्राइटेरिया फॉर रॉक्स एंड रॉक मासेस एंड वी फिनिश्ड आवर डिस्कशन ऑन बेसिक्स रिलेटेड टू रॉक मैकेनिक्स एंड रॉक इंजीनियरिंग सो टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट आवर डिस्कशन ऑन टनलिंग एंड द अंडरग्राउंड एक्सकेवेशन सो फर्स्ट आई विल बी टेलिंग यू the various types of uh, underground excavations along with uh, the ground conditions so to start with uh, we have uh, different types of underground excavation so first in this category include rock tunnels so these tunnels are excavated in firm cohesive media and this media can vary from very soft rock such as chalk or talc and this was used in this project channel tunnel which is uh, between uh, england and france and the tunnel boring machine was used so the media can vary from very soft rock to very hard rocks which can be kind of igneous rocks or metamorphic rocks so here this picture is uh, one picture from this tunnel channel tunnel which is between england and france then the second category include soft ground tunnels these tunnels are excavated in soft plastic cohesive or cohesionless media basically tunnels through soils they fall under this category so the example of such tunnel is calcutta metro underground tunnels which is excavated in marine clays these are specially shallow tunnels with overburden less than 50 meter so this is a picture which has been taken uh, from one of the source presenting the calcutta metro underground tunnel now in this case uh, the water poses the problem during excavation so we need to have specific instruments for tunneling coming to the third type that is mixed phase tunnel so in this case tunnels are excavated through geological media wherein part of the tunnel is driven through rocks and part of it through soils that is why it is called as mixed phase tunnels so the interface is usually a weathered material now if the shear stress that is mobilized along the interface it exceeds the shear strength of weathered material it leads to various stability problems and it is extremely uh, difficult to Uh, construct so uh, to show you that how it looks like let us say this is uh, the ground surface and you have to have the excavation here and say this is the interface where you have on this side as a rock media and on this side you have the soil and the overburden here in this case is say h so along the interface here along the interface you will have the uh, weathered material and that's what i mentioned that in case if the shear stress that is mobilized along the interface if it exceeds the shear strength of the weathering material weathered material that leads to stability problems so because of the two different type of materials here that is uh, rock on this side and soil on this side uh, it is clear that it will not be that easy to construct such type of tunnels 
Coming to the fourth category that is shield tunnels. So, uh, the tunneling process is called as shield tunneling. This is the construction methodology which is adopted for construction of soft ground tunnels and this was also adopted in Calcutta metro underground project. So, steel cylindrical shells they are used at front as well as uh, the rear end. So, the front end has a cutting face and uh, the objective of this is to cut the soil and hence advance the tunnel. However, at the rear end there is the assembly of high capacity compressors which push the shell in the forward direction and hence the tunnel is advanced. These steel shell they provide safety during the construction. They also permit simultaneous installation of supports at rear end and also permit the excavation in subaqueous condition. As I mentioned to you that uh, uh, Calcutta underground uh, project excavation project was uh, mainly through the marine clay. So, that is why this uh, shield tunneling was adopted because it is helpful in excavation in subaqueous condition. So, the next type of underground excavation it includes edits. So, these are short transverse tunnel which connect to two parallel tunnels or these are the tunnels which provide access to a side hill tunnel. So, let us take a look with the help of a figure that how it looks. So, here I will draw the plan as well as the cross section to give you the idea. So, let us say that here this is what is the foot of hill okay, and I take a section which is say it is a a. So, this is basically foot of hill and here also foot of hill. Now, at the center you have the ridge line And if I take this section A A, so it looks like this. So, this is what is your hill and So, basically here this is your main tunnel and from this side you have the entry. So, this is what we call as edit. So, this is uh, what is your plan and this is cross section at A A. Uh, so, uh, here I showed you the example that how uh, the edit looks like when it acts as a tunnel which provides access to the side hill tunnel. So, you can see this was the main tunnel and how uh, the through edit the entry to the main tunnel is constructed. So, this is what is edit. The next is uh, the tunnel 
portal. So, here you have a framed structure and see this is how it looks like. Uh, so, we have a hill. So, this is what we call as the framed structure and here you will have entry through slope face. Now, you see this is the slope surface and see there will be the chances that this material may slide along this failure surface. So, this is the part of the uh, hill. So, basically this portal frame which looks in the other uh, view looks like this. This will have to be designed in such a manner that it can take the load of this sliding material. So, this portal frame to be designed for the load of the sliding hill mass in case the hill is unstable. So, basically the load on the frame will depend upon that how much of the mass from the hill is going to slide. So, this is what we call as the tunnel portal. Now, the next structure is uh, called as drift. It is the small diameter tunnel which is excavated ahead of phase of advance before the excavation of full size tunnel to ascertain the exact geological conditions. You know that uh, these rocks and rock masses, uh, they are natural occurring material and lot of uncertainties are involved which may not be clear during the exploration program. So, sometimes you get a few surprises when you go for the tunneling. So, to avoid such things we can go for the small diameter tunnel which is excavated ahead of the phase of advance before the excavation of full size tunnel. So, this will help us to get the exact idea about the geological conditions that are prevailing at the tunnel site. This is how it looks like let us say this is the ridge line and uh, maybe this is the hill. Now, that is the center line of the tunnel and say this is the main tunnel. Now, the, let us see the face of advance is this. Now, what we do is ahead of the face of advance, we have the 
small tunnel like this. So, what will happen? The, once you have excavated this portion, this part and this part they it will be exposed. So, you can get the idea about the exact geological condition. So, basically this is what is your phase of advance and of course, here uh, this much is the overburden. So, this is what we call as drift this small diameter tunnel this is what is drift. Now, the next uh, type of the underground excavation it include uh, include uh, the now the next type of underground excavations include the pilot tunnel. Now, this is essential to excavate in situations where prediction of geological conditions at a given depth is absolutely uncertain. So, before we go for the uh, main tunnel, we have to construct the pilot tunnel. Let us see how it looks like. So, this is what is your ground condition. and uh, say this is the center line for the tunnel and maybe so in this case this z is the depth of excavation which is very large why we say very large means that the exploration up to that depth is going to be extremely uneconomical the exploration up to depth z will be uneconomical or it may not be possible. So, in that case what is done is the tunnel is advancing in this direction. So, that is the direction of advance. So, what we do is uh, we have the small tunnel maybe if the diameter of the main tunnel was let us say capital D. So, we have here the small d diameter and of course, uh, it is to be done for the uh, finite stretch. So, this small diameter tunnel which is this one is called as the pilot tunnel. So, basically the preliminary design of the tunnel is on the basis of the parameters that we estimate from the extrapolated uh, geology. This of course, gives rise to the uncertainty. So, studying the rock mass in a pilot tunnel which we excavate it removes this uncertainty and therefore, this is extremely helpful. Now, coming to the next category that is as against uh, tunnel whose uh, dimension in the other direction is much larger than its uh, cross section uh, that is the diameter of the tunnel is much smaller as compared to its length. The cavern is uh, a finite size cavity uh, having finite length, width and height. So, all these uh, three dimensions they are comparable to uh, each other or maybe of the similar order. So, these are adopted for underground storage chambers, for underground powerhouse which can make uh, as a part of the machine hall, transformer hall and switch yard and these are also used for underground civic utility.
purposes. So, we have the next type that is shafts. So, we have uh, these shafts can be vertical or inclined excavation. Uh, now, these are used to get an access to a certain point which is located at a large depth or they are also used for the purpose of ventilation in long tunnels or uh, used in surge shafts as well. So, let us see that how it is used uh, for the purpose of ventilation in long tunnels. So, you see that let us say if this is the long tunnel and here is the center line. So, and here maybe so need to come in this direction so here So, this is how it is used uh, for the ventilation in long tunnel. So, here you can see that these are the shafts. Then these shafts can also be used in uh, for uh, the surge tanks. Let us see how they uh, work. So, in case if uh, there is the sudden power failure. Then what happens is that the energy of the backward surge is dissipated in surge shafts. Let us see how with the help of a figure we can uh, see this. So, there is this uh, surge shaft so let us say the earlier the water table was here in this level of the water and in case of the sudden power failure uh, this this water level goes up and it may be like this here. So, that is how the backward surge is dissipated in this surge shaft. So, basically uh, these are the different types of underground excavation. So, when we have horizontal tunnel, we can treat it as the plane strain problem and in case if we have the situation like shafts, these are treated as axisymmetric problem. Kindly keep this in mind and we have already discussed that what are, what do you mean by plane strain problem, plane stress problem and axisymmetric problem. So, this was all about the types of uh, underground excavations. Now, we learn few aspects related to ground conditions in tunneling. So, here is a table uh, where uh, the second column gives you the idea about the ground classification and the last column tells us about the behavior of the rock uh, when such type of ground classification or such type of ground condition is there in the field. So, the first category is uh, competent self supporting. So, in this case uh, you have the massive rock mass which requires no support for tunnel stability. 
So uh, basically when the excavation is made in competent self supporting ground condition then you may not require any support for the stability of tunnel but then uh, we just provide uh, the uh, some nominal uh, support. Uh, the second type is incompetent non squeezing uh, ground classification. So, here you have the behavior of rock as a jointed rock mass which requires support for the tunnel stability. In case if you have the raveling kind of ground condition, in this case uh, chunks or flakes of the rock mass they begin to drop out of the arch or maybe the side wall once you excavate the uh, rock mass. Uh, the fourth category is uh, the squeezing ground condition. Now there can be different subclasses to that. Uh, the first one is uh, mild squeezing, then moderate squeezing and high squeezing. These are defined by the parameter Ua upon A where this Ua is the uh, radial deformation and A is the radius of the tunnel. So when it is to the tune of 1 to 3 percent it falls under the category of mild squeezing and if it is more than 5 percent it goes to the high squeezing subclass. So as far as the behavior of the rock is concerned in this case the rock mass squeezes plastically into the tunnel and this phenomenon is uh, time dependent and uh, the rate of squeezing it depends upon what is the degree of over stress. Uh, so uh, this uh, kind of condition can occur at shallow depths in weak rock masses uh, such as uh, shales, clay etc. And in hard rock masses under high cover uh, they may experience uh, slabbing or popping or rock burst kind of situation. Then the fifth type of ground classification include uh, swelling. Uh, here uh, the rock mass absorbs water and it increases in volume because of that or expands slowly into the tunnel. So such type of behavior you can see where the mineral like uh, Montmorillonite clays uh, they are available. Then the sixth condition is the running ground condition. In this case uh, the granular material becomes uh, very unstable in uh, steep shear zones. We have another condition called flowing. This is little bit different than the running ground condition. See how in case of the flowing ground condition a mixture of soil like material and the water it flows into the tunnel. Now this material can flow from invert as well as from the face, crown and wall and it can flow for large distances completely filling the tunnel in some cases. So let us say if this is the uh, tunnel say circular tunnel. So this bottom portion we call as invert top portion is uh, your crown and this is what is the uh, side of the uh, tunnel. So in case if you have the flowing dry type of uh, uh, ground condition then uh, this material can flow from any of uh, these places such as invert crown or the side wall and then it can uh, flow for the large distance and it also may happen that it completely chokes the tunnel in some of the cases. Then the last one uh, is the rock burst condition in this case a uh, uh, violent failure uh, occurs in hard and massive rock masses of class 2 type where these are subjected to high stresses. So this is uh, um, extremely violent and a dangerous kind of uh, situation. So uh, today we discussed about various types of underground excavations and also the ground conditions and the behavior of the rock mass because of such ground uh, conditions. So in the next class we will learn few more things about these ground conditions. Thank you very much.